give me five minutes to try to summarize the high, some high points. Don't cite me on these. I haven't read the original papers, but there were some amazing points across the day. I'm just going to go through them quickly. Um, so, you know, one big picture view is, wow, we are exposed to 8,000 high-use chemicals. We can only even measure 350. We know this from Tracy. So we really don't know what's happening. We absolutely must have more research. The backbone of activism and policy is good, solid research. We heard th um, that babies are born pre-polluted. The placenta is not developed to deal with these man-made chemicals. This is going to be, we are going to ride out the waves through future generations. But if we can have the research to understand that we also are going to be learning how to control epigenetics and gene editing. And so all of these questions will be the basis of how to fix our biology in a precision global public health way in the future. That's what we, what we need. We heard about social stress. We heard from Eric. Every experience you have from the moment you wake up is affecting our biology. It's affecting each other. We're social beings. It's adding up over time, over your day, over your years, over your lifetime. The social exposome is also potent, even though it's invisible. We heard from Barbara how stress makes us like lab rats. Stress changes our regulation. We're not these thoughtful, controlled, volitional people. We become automatically eating highly, highly dense, densely caloric food. This becomes a habit. Um, and this is transmitted also to the next generation. We heard that there are persistent chemicals and small particles that, that we are breathing at different densities, depending where we live, that are changing our metabolism. They are changing how we are burning calories, how we are storing calories. And some of these are, all, again, living on to be transmitted to the next generation, pre-polluted babies. We've just learned that dementia, there is probably a whole arm of what looks like dementia, type 3 dementia, that is, again, just a symptom of these exposomes, some of exposures. So Dale is such a pioneer, brave pioneer in this. We, we absolutely need more research on that. We learned that inequality degrades our environment. Segregation leads to worse air pollution, noise pollution, and green space. We also have some hope. I talked this morning about how we can either be overwhelmed and anxious at these facts facing us that are, they are overwhelming at an individual level, or we can be overly optimistic. But today we have heard so many ways that what we do really matters, what we do as individuals. We need to make the exposome explicit. We need to measure it. We need to make it visible. What are we allowing to be created into our environment, in our air globally? What's hiding in products? We heard from the panel that we need to ask to know as consumers. We need to give ratings on the web of products based on their chemicals and how they are polluting our environment. Make bad reviews online. Ask the, the companies selling them what is in their products. So I'm just going to end again, as Wolfram did, decide what you're going to do now and commit to it. One change in your diet, in the way you drink water, thinking about your, cosmet your change might be in your cosmetic products. Choose your politicians based on their views. Are they going to actively pursue regulation of our exposome, which is inherently our health. So um, I want to end with gratitude for the amazing work for your, you spending your day learning about this. And hopefully you feel engaged, activated, and empowered rather than deflated. So this, this today happened really because of this planning committee. And um, thank you so much. So Millen Alkanaya um, Al is an amazing college student. She's the daughter of Al our own amazing Alka Kanaya, Professor Kanaya. Are you here, Alka? Yes. Yay! Alka was mentioned today. She, she does, um, uh, she's a leader in obesity and East Asian populations, and Rachel was talking about her work as well. 
it was Rachel. Anyway, so Millen has spent her summer in part preparing for this conference. She made those infograms that are out there. I hope you noticed those. And she has um, been the um, main support to Samantha, along with our staff on the lower end of the pictures there. And of course, this wouldn't have happened for the last six months without the dedication and work of Samantha. Samantha, please come up. <laughs> Samantha, Samantha is both brilliant, super competent, and, and fueled by an Energizer Bunny battery by her passion and commitment and dedication. And I'm just so lucky to work with her in my life. Thank you so much. <laughs>